sing a couple of uh, choruses together and we'll get into our Bible study after a little bit of prayer time this evening. So let's pray together and uh, then we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have tonight to gather around. I pray that you help us this evening uh, to draw closer to your heart. I pray that you would encourage us in this midweek time and use your word to help us tonight. We pray it in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we're going to start out with a kid's song. The wise man built his house upon a rock. So if you know the actions at home, feel free to do it. And we will have a little bit of fun. The wise man built his house upon a rock. The wise man built his house upon a rock. The wise man built his house upon a rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house of the rock stood firm. A foolish man built his house upon the sand. A foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling. Came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and
all things created. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. For Well, good evening again, and uh, you've just joined us, we sang a few choruses together, and uh, we're going to have a little prayer time together, I've got a few things to share with you tonight, we didn't give you any announcements at the beginning, why don't we get right into the music to get our singing, and uh, we've got some prayer requests to mention with you, and a couple of announcements, we will meet together, Lord willing, again online Sunday morning at 10.30 on Facebook, we have a children's Sunday school class, I'd like you to want to tune in for there. We always have a story and a few songs and a craft and a Bible verse. So if you want to join in on that, uh, we'd love for you to uh, bring your children along to that little meeting. Then 11 o'clock in the morning, we always have our, our morning service and uh, we will meet together, Lord willing, then. But Sunday evening, we're going to try to do something a little different with this new program that we're using that sends to Facebook and YouTube. It gives us some options of different things we can do. As you can see on the bottom right here, you see that little fancy doodad with the words, the date and everything. I learned that today from someone smarter than me. I uh, call someone. Because another thing that this program allows us to do is to invite other people to join us on this, uh, on this platform. And so this coming Sunday night, uh, if it all the technology works right, we're going to bring on our missionary to St. Lucia, Brother Greg Little, and he is going to join us uh, after we have a little bit of music. He will uh, give us an update about their ministry and uh, what they're doing right now. And then he's going to preach for us. And uh, we're able to do that. He's in, actually in Nova Scotia right now. And I've already talked to a, a pastor of a supporting church in Ontario, and he has agreed to uh, meet with us on a Sunday night and uh, preach for us. So we're probably going to have some guest preachers, at least while we're online. We have this opportunity to do that. So uh, we're looking forward to that. So I encourage you to join with us this Sunday and uh, as we worship together uh, from our homes. Be much in prayer about our uh, province and our country, of course. But uh, for here in Newfoundland, uh, they would begin opening up things. I know Monday they're going to go to another level. And uh, according to what I've read, uh, this Monday we go to level three. And then when we get to level two, we will be allowed to meet as a church with restrictions. So we don't know what they are yet. I'm not sure they have them worked out, uh, but I'm sure there will be some this physical distancing and sanitary sanitization, all that stuff. So we'll take care of all that and make sure that uh, we can meet safely for everybody's health. But uh, we would love to be able to get back to meeting together. But in the meantime, I think we will uh, try to bring in some guests and I think it will be an encouragement and a help to us. So, uh, Let's uh, pray about those things. And uh, I put some new, I put a new background up there because the other one was a bit too bright. You couldn't really see it. I don't know if you can see that or not tonight, but we'll keep praying for all our authorities on this side. We pray for our elected officials and those that are serving our communities in different capacities, first responders and such. So we'll pray for uh, them tonight. On the other side of our board, we pray for some special requests. We're praying for the community of St. Lawrence. Uh, and they lost four fishermen. A tragic accident down there and they're still searching for one man so but we need to pray for that community and the families affected of course the COVID-19 shutdown as things begin to open up again uh, praying for Samantha and Mike and the Pinhorn family they both uh, both families have lost a loved one recently so we're praying for them praying for the health of Jim Bolt as he deals with cancer treatments and Joyce Keith and Winston Saunders and uh, our missionaries the we will, as I mentioned, Greg Little and his family, uh, hopefully we'll get to see them Sunday night. He will try to introduce his family and then they're going to move out of the picture a little bit. And then he will talk for a while. We'll answer some questions and then uh, he will preach for us. Uh, Paul Connor and his family. Uh, I don't have any details other than that. His wife had some sort of a health scare this week and spent a couple of days in hospital. I think everything's OK now. I uh, emailed him. I haven't got a response back just yet, uh, but uh my friend I was talking to today told me that things seem to be uh, doing okay there now, but I sent him a message that we'll be praying for his wife and her health needs. 
And uh, the O'Briens in uh, Stephenville, we don't support them uh, financially, but we do pray for them. And they send out prayer letters every so often. And I just uh, saw this one uh, this week, so I printed it off. You can't see it. I'll read you the highlights of that. And uh, they're doing, of course, they're doing all of their services online. And they've got the Northcott family that are there helping them. And they've been a big help with the technical side of doing the live stream and uh, those things, and uh, they are getting a good response. They are hearing from people uh, that are watching their services that have never yet attended their church and are saying, we want to attend church when it opens up again, but that they face a new problem in that they were renting uh, from a local community college. Uh, they were renting a room, but of course the community college is not offering classes through the end of this year, and they may not be able to rent from there uh, through the end of the year, but they had already been praying about finding a place to meet and they were can they're already looking at several rental places and a building that's up for sale so uh, we're just going to pray about that he's he said we'll send an, ed, an update when they have more details uh, but we need to pray for a new hope Baptist church in stephenville that when they are allowed to meet together again that they will be able to have a place to meet so we will pray for them today uh, if you're watching our service uh and uh, you've never been to a church service here, but you'd like for us to pray for you, we'd be happy to do that. You can email, uh, the church email address is hbcmarystown at gmail.com. And you can email us your prayer request. And if you don't want us to share it on a live stream, that's with no problem with that. If we can just pray privately for your needs and we'll try to reach out to you and help you if we can. But if uh, there's something you want us to pray about, feel free to contact us and uh, we will uh, do our best to pray for you and ask the Lord to uh, work on your behalf. So uh, feel free to use that email for anything. I know this week we have received several emails of people sending their tithes and offerings through e-transfer. We appreciate that. And uh, the Lord will bless you for being faithful and uh, giving to his work. And I encourage uh, all of us to be faithful in doing what we ought to be doing in these days. We just had a good meeting with our some of the teenagers. We had a video conference call. We played some games and tested our mental and physical prowess as we tried a few different activities. But it was a little bit of fun, so we're thankful for the young people that uh, meet with us every week, and we're looking forward to uh, having youth hour again when we get together and play some games and have a bit of fellowship. Let's take a few moments to pray together, then we'll get into our Bible study tonight. You can pray along about our needs or pray for your own needs or just listen as I pray, but we will take a moment to pray about these things tonight. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have to pray. Lord, I thank you that uh, we are able to provide uh, worship times and prayer times and Bible study times online. We thank you for the technology. Lord, I thank you for the people that have helped uh, us over these weeks uh, to be able to figure out the technical side of things and to provide uh, these services. And I pray even tonight that you help the internet and devices to cooperate so that we can continue to share the word of God. Lord, as we spend time in prayer tonight, we ask that you would hear our prayer and answer our requests. We pray tonight for those in authority over us, our prime minister and our premier, those making decisions about how things should open up in the next few days. Please give them great wisdom. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would uh, be safe. You would keep people as healthy as possible. And Lord, that uh, we would soon be able to meet together in our churches again. And Lord, we pray for those that are working in the midst of this, first responders and frontline staff and healthcare staff. And I just pray that you bless and protect them during this time. Lord, we pray tonight for the community of St. Lawrence as they've suffered a great tragedy and many people are hurting. I just pray that you would encourage hearts and may your grace and peace be known. Lord, also for Samantha and Mike, uh, that you would encourage their hearts. And I thank you for their testimony through this very trying time as they lost their little baby and uh, are looking forward to one day seeing her again in heaven. And Lord, we pray tonight for uh, the Pinhorn family as they mourn the loss of my Aunt Nellie and the extended family there. Strengthen them, Lord, help them. Lord, I uh, pray tonight uh, for our missionaries, the Connors. I pray especially for Jeanette and her health, that you would just help them in these days. Uh, put your hand upon her and help her and bless Paul and his family. Lord, we pray for the little family. Lord, I pray that we'd be able to meet with them on Sunday night and we could encourage them and they could encourage us. And 
Lord, we pray tonight for the O'Brien family and Steve and Bill. I thank you for the great work they're doing there. I thank you for the Northcott family as they help them. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would provide for them a place to meet, that when they are allowed to meet together as a church again, that they would have a place where they can meet together and have some space and, uh, and provide their church services. And I pray for the new people that they have met online and over these days that they would come to the services and Lord, that uh, they would see fruit for their labors. Lord, we pray tonight for the churches that support us and I thank you for each one of them and I pray that you bless uh, each service, each church as they try to provide services online and, and helping their church people in their communities. And, uh, we just ask for your help and your grace and your strength through these days. Help us now, we pray, in these few moments to hear from you again and our time in the scriptures. In Jesus' name, I pray it. Amen. All right, last uh, week in our Be Bold series, we asked the question, is God always with me? And we learned that God is omnipresent, which means being everywhere all at once. And why do you think God wants to be with us everywhere we go? Is it that God is just wanting to check up on us or, uh, you know, just to keep track of us? Uh, these verses, sorry, down here tell us that God cares about us. God loves us and he wants to help us and protect us. So it's not that he just wants to check up on us, it's that he cares to and wants to take care of us. So how do we feel about God knowing every thought and action? Well, that ought to uh, guide our thoughts and actions to be careful that we only think and say and do things that please God, knowing he's always with us. And what do you think, or what do you imagine God thinks when he sees us? Now, we know we're all sinners, and we know the things that we think and do and we probably shouldn't do. And we say, boy, how can God ever love me? Well, Psalm 139, verses 13 to 18 tell us that God's thoughts towards us are thoughts of love, and they are too many to count. He loves us that much. God loves us no matter what, and uh, God watches over us in love. So God is with us everywhere we go. And he does that because he loves us and he wants to care for us. And tonight we're going to ask the question, why are people so mean? I'm sure uh, you've seen the news of all the things happening uh, around the world, uh, riots and pro protests and all these things. And as we were going through these series of questions, our, our next question, in fact, in this series is, if God is my friend, why are people mean to me? And as I considered that question, I thought I would change it a little bit. Uh, if I had just been meeting tonight with some teenagers, uh, some young teens or preteens, I probably would have just approached that question. Why are people mean to me? Because uh, at that age, uh, those age young people really probably need to understand more about it. But because we're doing this online and there's probably a broader audience and I'm not just face to face with a group of young people, I thought we would take a much broader look uh, at what the Bible says about people being mean. You know, as we see all the things that are, are, are going on in our world. And if you've spent any time on Facebook or Twitter and have, read posts and then read the comments that come under those posts, you've probably come across a lot of mean words and mean spirited exchanges. And uh, I, I can't do it very much. Uh, I'll read some, uh, something that I may be interested in an article, but when I get to the comment section, uh, I just have to stop. It always kind of amazes me how brave some people are behind the anonymity of a computer or a device, things that they would never in a million years say to somebody face to face, uh, but they quite readily will put it on a, on, a, on a website. So I think I thought it would be good if we would explore just a little more from the Bible about the topic, why, uh, why people are mean and what do we do about it and how do we, how do we avoid being mean and how do we deal with it when someone's mean to us? And uh, we're going to look at three questions. Why are people mean? How can I avoid being mean? And how do I respond when someone is mean to me? So let's talk first of all tonight. Why are people mean? Now, I, please don't take me that I think everybody is mean all the time. Uh, you know, it's, that's not what I mean. Uh, but I'm sure at some point in our lives, we can look back and 
in retrospect, say, you know, I said that or I did that, and that was a little bit mean. And maybe it was thoughtless. Maybe we didn't do it on purpose. Maybe we just weren't thinking of the entire situation. Or maybe sometimes we, we did it in the heat of the moment, and we were trying to, uh, to prove our point. But it, it comes sometimes naturally because we have a sin nature. I hope you got a Bible tonight and, uh, or something where you can see some Bible verses, a device or something that you can find the book of Romans chapter 3. And I'm, most of the verses that I'll read tonight, I, the reference will be up here. And I hope you can follow along, find them in your Bibles. And if you don't have time to read them all or we don't have time to read them all tonight, you can uh, maybe mark them down and have a look at them. But in Romans chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. The next verses go on to tell us uh, they are deceitful, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, the way of peace have they not known. And notice verse 18, you got a Bible, Romans 3, look at verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. The main and, and, and the, the root cause of all meanness and, and all sin is rooted in the fact that we have a sin nature. And someone once said, we are not sinners because we sin. We don't become sinners because we've committed sin. We sin because we are sinners. We are naturally, we're born with a sin nature. We are born to sin. Uh, we don't have to teach small children to say no. We don't have to teach small children to grab toys from other children and be selfish. We don't teach them that. We teach them to be kind. We teach them to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and yes, please. And we teach them manners. We don't have to teach them to be selfish. It comes naturally because we have a sin nature. And the Bible here says several times in this passage, there is none that doeth good. We are naturally sinners, which makes us naturally selfish. And the story in Isaiah is the story of Lucifer in heaven. Lucifer, whom we now know as Satan, he was an angel in heaven, and he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven, the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend. I will be like the most high. He was selfish. I want to be God, he said, basically. And when he got Adam and Eve to sin, the Bible says that they took of the fruit because it looked good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes and they wanted to be wiser. So their main goal in taking the fruit was this is good for me. Selfishness. And many times when we are mean to people or someone is mean to us, it comes down, first of all, we all have a sin nature and that makes us selfish. So we think more about ourselves than about the other people. There's another couple of reasons I thought why people are mean. A superiority complex. A superiority complex. I think I'm better than you. That's what a superiority complex is. I don't personally think that. I'm just trying to explain it. But when we think we are superior to someone else and we think we can look down on them or we can speak down to them, the story in the Bible in Esther chapter 3 is the story of Haman and Mordecai. And the king had said that people were to bow down to Haman. But a man named Mordecai believed God and loved God and said, I will not bow to a man. I will only worship God. So when Haman would pass by, everybody else would bow down to him, but Mordecai would not. He would stand. And when Haman, it's in Esther chapter 3 and verse 5, when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought, scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Mordecai was a Jew. And Haman said, you know what? It's not enough just for me to take Mordecai and get him punished because he won't bow down. 
said, I'm going to get everybody, every Jew, because he knew they believed in God. And Haman came up with an idea to destroy all the Jews in their kingdom. It didn't happen. God protected the Jews. God used Esther and uh, he used Mordecai and Haman was punished for his selfishness. But he had a superiority complex. He thought, you know what? I'm better than everybody else. They should bow down to me. And it really irked him that they wouldn't bow to him. Some people call it a holier than thou attitude. And that's a biblical reference. I learned that. I didn't know. I used to hear holier than thou, and I just thought it was something somebody made up, but it's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 5. And God said, there are people that say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. And you know what God said about that? He said in Isaiah 65, and verse 5, these are a smoke in my nose. Have you ever been near a campfire and get the smoke up your nose? And it makes your eyes water and you start coughing and spitting and you got to walk away and all that stuff. God said, you know what? People who say I'm holier than thou, they're like smoke in my nose. That's the, the reaction. God is trying to give us a visual picture. This is how God reacts to people that think they're better than everybody else. He said, you're like smoke in my nose. So that will teach us. First Peter 1, or First Peter 5 and verse 6, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We're not better than anyone else. We don't, should not think we are superior. But you know why another reason some people are mean? An inferiority complex. They think everybody is better than them. So they try to knock everybody else down by being mean to them. They try to say mean things. They try to cut them down. And they try to say things that will cause other people to think less of themselves, which they hope will help them feel better. A great example of this is in 1 Samuel chapter 18. It's the story of Samuel and, or Saul and David. And David had come into Saul, Saul's kingdom and they had gone out to battle. First of all, David had gone and killed the giant Goliath and then they came into the kingdom and Saul was sending him out with the armies. And when they were coming back from battle, people were saying, Saul hath slain thousands and David his ten thousands. And they were ascribing more fame to David than Saul. And the Bible says that Saul was very displeased and he eyed him from that day forward. And it got so bad that David, or while playing a harp to soothe Saul's spirit, Saul threw a javelin at him and tried to stick him to the wall, tried to kill him. Because Saul said, he's better than me and people like him better than me. And I don't like that. I want to be better. So in his inferiority complex saying, I'm not as good as David, I'm going to get rid of David. He was trying to be mean. So there, here are the reasons that we have. It all starts with our sin nature. And that makes us selfish. And then either we think we're better than everybody or everybody's better than me. So I've got to knock everybody down a peg because I love me. That's why many times we are mean or someone is mean to us. So how can I avoid, how can we as individuals, as Christians, if we know Jesus as our Savior, how can we avoid being mean? Well, remember, we are all made in the likeness of God, yet we're different from each other. In Genesis 1 and verse 27, God said, let us make man in our image. So we are created in God's image. We are created uh, with a, a body, soul, and a spirit. Uh, and the Bible tells us that our, our mind and our intellect and our soul were in God's image. And, but in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it tells us in a great house, there are vessels of gold and silver and wood and earth. Saying there's many different types of vessels. If you go into your kitchen at home, or maybe you're in your kitchen right now, maybe you're sitting there eating supper, or you're in your house, you can look around your kitchen and you can see there are glasses made of glass, and then there are cups made of ceramic, and then there are plates of in our house, we've got the those Corel plates. I don't know what they're made out of, uh, some white thing. And uh, there's plastic plates. And, and there, we've got, you know, all these different types of dishes. There's different types of cups. Then we get into the pots and the pans. And there's uh, frying pans. And there's, and there's all, you know, and all the different types of cutlery and serving dishes. And they all each, none is more valuable than the other. They all get used for their particular jobs. And God has created us 
in his image like him, but we're all different because he has a different job for each of us to do. So we have to remember that though we are different from each other in certain ways, we are all made in the likeness of God. So when we understand that, then we can remember we're all sinners. All have sinned, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned. That was the same chapter where they said, there's none righteous, there is none that doeth good, there are none, not all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. So if I understand that everyone I deal with is a sinner, I understand that they make mistakes just like I do. And if I understand that sometimes other people are selfish, just like I'm selfish sometimes, if I understand that, then I can understand, you know, maybe I don't need to be mean to them. Maybe I don't need to look down on them. Maybe I don't have to say harsh things. And we need to realize because of that, we can learn something from everyone. Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4 tell us to let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We can learn something from everyone. I was quite pleased today. I called a guy I had never met before. I called him because he, someone had told me he knew how to use this program that I got going here tonight, and I didn't know what to do. And he said, call, yeah, sure, I'll help you. So we got talking, and he said, uh, and we got talking through this program. We could see each other. And he was telling me, here, point here and click here. Point here and click here. Do that. And and I, he answered every question and I had and some I didn't have. I didn't know I had. It, he just helped me with all kinds of things. And when we understand every person we deal with is created in the image of God, but they're a little different from us. And they're sinners, just like we're sinners. We're all going to make mistakes. Say, you know what? I can probably learn something from this person. Now, here's our last question. We'll soon be done. How should I respond when somebody's mean to me? How should I respond when somebody is mean to me? I want to take a moment, first of all, and speak to if any of you, if you're in a situation where somebody is hurting you or abusing you in any way, in any shape or form, physically or mentally or emotionally, or you don't feel safe in your current situation, you need to talk to somebody. You need to get someone to help you through that situation. If you're being abused or you're having uh, problems and, and you don't feel safe, you need to get help with that situation. So you need to reach out to somebody, whether it's us as a church or, or somebody in your family, someone else or someone, a trusted friend, you need to talk to somebody to get help with that situation. But if you're dealing, maybe tonight people are just treating you meanly because they're insecure or they're selfish, or, or should you be mean back? Or, you know, should, uh, as uh, you know, a little boy, should you hit them back harder, <laughs> punch them in the nose or make more fun of them? I don't think that's the way we should do. Here's what I think the Bible tells us we should do. If someone is what we would consider being mean to us. Learn what you can from it. Learn what you can. Uh, if you got your Bibles open to Romans 3, turn over one page to Romans 5. Romans 5 verse 3 says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Tribulation Bill's experience. What can we learn from it? So let me give you a couple little things to ask yourself. If someone says something to you and you think it's mean, you think it's harsh, you think it's cruel, you think it's any of those things, ask yourself this. Is it true? Are what they're saying, what they're saying about me, is it true? If it's not true, completely ignore it. Just forget about it. Just let it bounce off you run off you like water off a duck's back, as they say, and don't even worry about it. If it is true, ask yourself this question. Was it said in love? Determine whether that person was really trying to help you or hurt you. 
If they were trying to help you in love, then maybe we should pay attention to what they're saying. If they, if they were just saying it in a mean-spirited way, it wasn't said in love, you can probably you know, just put it aside and say, I'll, I'll deal with it later. If it's true, and if it was said in love, or even if it wasn't said in love, but still it's kind of true, ask yourself this question. Does God agree? If someone said something to you and you think it's really mean, harsh, cruel, any of those things, but then when you really think about it, say, you know, maybe there is an element of truth to this. Maybe that person really was trying to help me. And so what does God think about it? What does God say about that? Then you can go to the Bible. You can find out what the Bible says about whatever they said, and you can apply that to your life. And if those three things are true, then pray about what was said and get some insight from the Bible, and God will help you. Learn from it if you can. If, it, if it's not true, don't worry about it. Ignore it. If it's true and it was said in love, say, well, what does God say about it? And learn from it that way. Here's another thought. Let it help you rely on Jesus. In 2 Corinthians, the apostle Paul was having a problem, and he said, my grace, he's speaking of God, said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul said, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And the next verse he said, when I'm weak, then I'll be strong. So let it help you rely on Jesus. If someone is saying something to you or someone is doing something and you say, you know, it's really mean, it's harsh, it's cruel, and you don't know what to do with it, let it drive you closer to Jesus. Go to Jesus more in prayer and talk to him about it. And at your weakest point, that's when God can really say, let me be your strength. Here's another thought. Don't just tolerate them. Love them. Jesus said, you have heard, this is Matthew chapter 5. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, do, uh, Bless them that curse you. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. If ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Jesus said, don't just tolerate them, show love. We can do kind things, we can pray for them, we can help them if the opportunity allows it. Romans chapter 12 and verse 18 tells us, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. As much as lieth in you. And I found, I thought of this verse after, and I had to scribble it in my notes. I remember the phrase in the Bible that said, you'll heap coals of fire on their head. And it's in Matthew, or sorry, in Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 and 22, but it's repeated again in Romans 12. And it says, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, and it will heap coals of fire on his head. And I've always thought that was harsh. I'm like, that sounds a lot like revenge. So I studied it out, <laughs> I read it today, figured out what it meant. And, and the phrase there, the coals of fire, it doesn't talk about getting great revenge on them. It talks about the type of heat that you would put on something not to destroy it, but to melt it. The heat that you would put on to melt something so you can mold it to the fashion that you want. And the Bible is saying if, if you have enemies that are doing things, do kind things. Melt them with kindness. I'm not trying to get revenge at keeping the coals of fire on their head, which I always thought was kind of strange. I mean, that doesn't sound very Christian-like. So I decided today I'd probably figure out what it meant. And it means to melt them. Jesus said, just show great love. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So don't just tolerate. Show love and know that God helps us get along. God says, Love everybody because I'm showing you love. God loves us every day. I've seen several times recently on social media uh, these things that uh, what to do with toxic people in your life. Toxic people that cause you great irritation and pain. And it says just cut toxic people out of your life. And someone else made the comment, what if God did that? 
What if God cut all the toxic people out of his life? That means all the people that were infected by sin. Sin is toxic. Sin causes death. And God, if God cut every person that was infected by sin out of his life, 7.5 billion people would be wiped off the face of the earth. Every one of us are sinners. So God just doesn't cut all the toxic people out of his life. God shows great love and patience and kindness. As long as there are sinners on this earth, we'll have to deal with mean people. There's always going to be sinners. So we must deal with our own sinful, selfish desires and then follow God's principles. Let's learn what we can from it. Let's rely on Jesus. Let's show love. And as much as lies as possible, as much as lies in us, live peaceably. And as God loves me, without request for reward or anything, God just says, I love you. Let us show that love to other people. I hope that was a help to you tonight. I hope it will help you in these days when uh, there's so many things going on and, and we want to give our opinions and, and all these things. Let's, let's first show love. God will be pleased with that. Let's have a word of prayer when we finish tonight. Our Heavenly Father, help us to be bold in these days. Be bold to show great love. Help us to maybe even go against the grain and show Love to those that are not showing love to us. Help us to follow the example Jesus gave us in the scriptures. Help us to be bold because we have great love from you, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And help us to show that same grace, mercy, and forgiveness to those in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Pray that you would bless us in these next few days. We look forward to gathering around your word again on Sunday. We ask now for your help and your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in tonight. I hope that was a help to you. And uh, again, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday, 1030 for our children's Sunday school, 11 o'clock for our morning service. And Lord willing, in our 6 p.m. service, uh, we will have guest preacher, missionary Greg Little uh, to St. Lucia joining us. God bless you. Have a great evening.